Psalm 16 in my family Bible from 1870 is prefaced in the following manner. David, in distrust of merits, showeth the hope of his calling, of the resurrection and life everlasting. I've decided to focus my witness today on the experience of distrust and hope, and I'll leave the matters of resurrection and everlasting to Reverend John. About a year and a half ago, I was at a low point in my life, maybe the lowest. I was distrustful, discontent, negative, self-loathing, and becoming increasingly isolated. My disconnection was bathed in superiority, impatience, and general disdain for almost everything. I was sick and tired of feeling sick and tired. From the outside, this may not have been evident. Self-will had gotten me pretty far in life. I kept up appearances by going to work, putting on my game face, and attending church. But I had hit a bottom, emotionally and spiritually. The issue was that I was playing God, and that simply doesn't work. In truth, my moral bankruptcy was self-imposed. My truth, my trust, energy, thoughts, and plans all centered on my relationship with alcohol and my ever-increasing compulsion to drink. I had become to worship it, and in what fleeting comfort I found in drinking diminished slowly but steadily, as did my hope and my faith. So what did I do? Like any good Methodist, I joined a book club. The church was leading a a, a book study by Richard Rohr entitled Breathing Underwater, and the text and the discussions led me to understand my powerlessness, believe in a different future, and make a decision to turn my will and my life over to the care of God. Nothing happened overnight. From the book discussions I attended, it took me several weeks to ease into the idea of another approach and taking another action, which evolved into attending and joining an incredible covenant group, a spiritual fellowship that perfectly aligns with the foundations I've been blessed to nurture here at King Avenue. Ever since, I've had the opportunity to see and live hope in God. A word about care because it is important. Before I made a decision to change, I had to accept my dependence on God. That was the paradox. In order to become free and truly independent, I needed to turn over my will to God's care. Self-will needed to align with God's will, and that required action. Faith alone was not enough. Faith was necessary, but it wasn't a decision or an action. Trusting God to deliver me from my dis-ease meant relinquishing the idea that I had any control over it in the first place. I was blocked by God by my own belief that I was in charge and that I could fix anything or anyone. Today, I choose to surrender to the illusion that I manage, manage anything at all. Strength is born from powerlessness and faith from doing the work. Another thing I can share about turning my will over to the care of God is that I become much healthier physically, mentally, and spiritually. I become less selfish and preoccupied with my own needs. By asking for help, I am available to help others and realize promises that seemed heretofore as exhausting as they were elusive. I'd like to close with a prayer written by Thomas Merton from Thoughts in Solitude. Pastor John shared this prayer with us on the first night of the reading group, and it seems relevant here. My Lord God, I have no idea where I'm going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I cannot know for certain where it will end, nor do I really know myself. And the fact that I think that I am following your will does not mean that I'm actually doing so. But I believe that the desire to please you does in fact please you. And I hope that I have that desire in all that I am doing. I hope that I will never do anything apart from that desire. And I know that if I do this, you will lead me by the right road, though I may not know nothing about it. There I will trust you always, though I may seem to be lost and in the shadow of death. I will not fear, for you are ever with me, and you will never leave me to face my perils alone.